Hey everybody, welcome there. On the paint table is my weekly show where you see what I got done and what I'm working on and what is coming up. So this week, I finished painting the four Stormcast Eternals um, from the Crypt Hunters uh, board game, bookshelf board game by Games Workshop, and I painted some stuff for Blaster Volume 2, uh, which is coming real soon. Uh, you sh should see Volume 2 in the next couple weeks. I'm um, shooting for getting it out by the end of September, uh, which means that we can start working on Blaster Volume 3, which should be also very exciting and out sometime in the winter. I'm not promising any dates because obviously it's just, this is a we're shooting for quarterly but everyone has a life outside <laughs> blaster too um so yeah volume two is gonna be exciting um and it's gonna feature new ways of playing last days uh volume three is gonna have some work on gamma wolves because um i don't know if you guys saw the announcement from osprey this week but gamma wolves my new tabletop um game uh, with osprey publishing has uh, a preview up there's a pdf preview you can see the the core mechanics and then what you need to play um, and yeah, I want to do some expansions, some like, like early, early expansions for it with just some additional fun content, uh, in Blaster coming up in, um, in the winter time too, shortly after it gets launched. So like around the time it gets launched, hopefully. Uh, and yeah, and so this volume two though has some stuff for last days, which is called Evolutions. Um, and Evolutions is about basically taking that disaster movie post-apocalyptic or apocalypse kind of premise and just applying the different ways that that happens because I love scary movies and um, there's a million million different end of the world scenarios in scary movies so I took the zombie one and expanded it a whole bunch with like different evolving types of zombies and then um, I took the uh, the trope basically and applied it to like an unshackled AI. It's like an AI apocalypse where robots basically run rampant and are now hunting down the human race. And I painted some stuff from Reaper up for that. So uh, yeah, you'll see that coming up in the next couple weeks, hopefully. Um, and I did a whole bunch of photography for that this week. Uh, you're also gonna cut briefly to my dining room <laughs> for a look at the um, Crypt Hunters because Cash loved Crypt Hunters so much that uh, that we played it like two or three times now. We played it all through Rise of the Orcs. Uh, these bookshelf games, I can I can unabashedly give it my stamp of approval of they are kid friendly and they're great like um, sort of uninitiated war gamer games because Cat and Cash both love Crypt Hunters and Rise of the Orcs uh, and they became like our after dinner games for the last couple weeks. I painted them up so. Uh, and then I'm working on some stuff coming up for my Ultramarines. I want to get back to some 40k, uh, and I've got some base coats and washes down on my next sort of like leg of points <laughs> for my Ultramarines. Um, and with all the previews and codex announcements right now for the uh, the new 40k stuff for uh, Necrons and Ultramarines, um, we've both been kind of excited about that. It's given me the impetus to finish my Space Marine Hero Squad too, because regular old Space Marines, non-primary Space Marines, are getting a bump, which I'm excited about. So it gives me a reason to actually like finish off that Ultramarine Squad, not feel bad about having them in my primary army, and also like feature them in some battle reports just to see how the, the rules for the, the basic Marines go. So let's see what I got done and what is coming up. And so here we go, my painted pile for um, last days. I painted up a couple of evolved zombies. So we have a spit talker. Um, he's a zombie that spits acid and has clearly got something wrong with his guts. He ate something bad and it's coming out everywhere and it's gonna melt you. So I uh, this punk rock zombie was kind of fun. This is a mantic zombie. Um, and uh, he was kind of perfect because he's got this like kind of like leaning back, dripping cadaverous chest. And because he's punk rock, like who knows what this guy ate? <laughs> Could have eaten anything. If you live on a steady diet of like street hot dogs and um, and, and uh, food truck stuff, you, you end up with that kind of an in internal system. And this guy's a Thrasher. I think he's a Heresy Mini. He might be Reaper. Um, one of these like uh, running zombies or rage zombies, I believe they're called. I can't remember. I think it's either Reaper or Heresy. I'm not entirely sure. I know the Heresy ghouls look kind of like this. I don't remember and, I, and the tab didn't tell me. <laughs> So, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to credit both in Blaster and hope I'm right. And if it's a third party, I apologize. Um, and the Thrashers are basically fast zombies. I wanted there to be a rule for, like, running zombies. And these are Reaper. These are some of the Reaper um, Skelebots. Uh, I wanted the, um, the, the machines to look like the Helper Bots from... Um, uh, what should I call it? From uh, either the uh, what is it, Death Love and Robots, or um, the Helper Bots from the Venture Brothers. <laughs> and this one's a top. So these are Seeker drones, which is the Helper Bots that have like been turned against you, or actually kind of like the Animatrix too, where like the like the labor robots basically get get unshackled and they start hunting people down. And this one's a tactical uh, drone, which is basically a Seeker drone with guns um, that's been like reprogrammed to be able to shoot and stuff like that. 
So these would be like the common menace. They would replace the zombies in the game and they would start hunting you down. And then like as the um, the game progresses, basically more and more of the evolved ones show up. So it could be just like a tactical drone like this. And only one of each type can show up during the course of the game. Or it could be this guy who's the Nano Slayer. And the Nano Slayer is basically like a, a reconstituting itself nano machine that can take a bunch of different like shapes and forms. And it usually just like evolves itself into whatever weapons are needed to um, to blow people up. And this is, I believe, a Reaper Cyborg that I thought was cool and painted up to be the, the Nano Slayer. Um, and so yeah, this is uh, some of the work that I did this week on Last Days, which I was pretty stoked about. Uh, let's take a look at the Crypt Hunters in my dining room. So here's a little bonus edition <laughs> on the pay table live from my dining room table, as you can see. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, this has been done on a crappy on my iPhone. So I mean, maybe not crappy, maybe it's fantastic. Maybe this sounds perfect and you guys don't care, but it's a little bit shaky probably. Uh, and I painted up the castigators from Crypt Hunters. So these are done with um, Vallejo Air Brassy Brass as a base coat through my airbrush. And then all the stuff um, just base coated and washed. So I think it's Eschen Gray for all the tabards. I used Menoth Red, I think, from uh, P3 for the um, the red parts and the cloaks and stuff. And then Thunderhawk Blue for my Griff Hound. And, oh geez, Morn Fang, I think, for the feathers and other bits and bobs. Uh, I used Iron Blaster for all the metallics. And everything was given a wash, so Agrax Gloss for the armor. And then uh, Null Nile Gloss for, like, the steely bits. Uh, and then highlighted back up. Uh, and this was my custom... I use them as Celestial Warbringers, usually. Uh, but my custom, um, was it my Azurian Thunder Guard was what I called them because I had, I painted up a whole unit of ogres. My Iron Guts from my Ogre Army were actually painted up originally to be part of my uh, Stormcast Army. Back in the, back in the first, the year one, the, the Batman year one of um, Age of Sigmar where like we didn't really, we, like army lists were whatever you wanted to be. You just allied things. And I thought it was cool to have like a unit of ogres basically from leftover from the War Against Chaos stationed in Azer. Um, and doing their thing, but they're super fun to paint. They're they're effectively um, uh, other um, what should we call it? Other uh, shades by Warhammer Underworlds uh, units. So they've got the great textured bases, and I did them to match all my Underworld stuff, and to match all of my uh, current um, Underworlds warbands as well. So they're fun to paint. And Cash and Cat, like the reason you're seeing this on my iPhone right now. Is Cash and Cat have been loving these bookshelf games, and we—I literally forgot Crypt Hunters on this table as I was walking out the door, and didn't have time to come back and get it to film it on the paint table. So I'm just filming this on my iPhone after filming the rest of it, and just sliding it in the clip. So there you go, some castigators, and that takes me to ten models I think painted this week. Let's take a look at what is coming up. And here's what I got done on my ultramarines this week. So last week you saw them just airbrushed. Uh, this week I got the base cuts and washes done and did all the bases. I tend to go like messiest steps to least messy steps. And so with the airbrushing finished, I base coated everything, threw the washes down. Um, and that also included throwing down some um, just thin down. Oh God, what is it? It's not Mornfang Brown. It's like a stage lighter Mornfang Brown. For, it used to be called Vermin Fur in old Citadel terms, whatever vermin fur is now. <laughs> anyway, it's thinned out with water and some gloss varnish uh, and then paint it over top of the bases to give that like rusty look. If you ever want to make your own kind of like weathering pigments, that's my recommendation is just get like a red brown or a orange brown um, and then thin it with water and gloss and you'll get this nice effect. Uh, and then just dry brush back up again and they're ready for some details and then they'll be, they'll be done. And then I've got five more of these guys to build and paint and when that's finished, I'll finish up my Space Marine Heroes. These guys have been sitting like this, like, oh my God, they're dusty, since Kill Team. I gotta get some compressed air and, and maybe just my airbrush and blow all the dust off them because they've been sitting on a shelf with the other ones I, I painted for Kill Team forever. Um, and there's only eight unique Space Marines in the box. So I'm actually gonna have to reuse uh, two of the poses. This one is the reloading guy, but I'm just gonna do them with helmets because I made all my Space Marine heroes without helmets. Uh, I'll just do them as helmeted versions so they're just slightly different and then I'll feel okay about having re <laughs> reused the same poses. Um, and I'll paint the captain too because I mean if I'm gonna do it I might as well do them all and just like finish it off and have them all done. If I could somehow get my copy or my hands on a copy of uh, Labyrinth of Necrons, I can't, unfortunately Barnes Noble isn't shipping to Canada right now so I can't get a hand, like see, it's, it's out there with all the expansions. I could get the rest of the Space Marine heroes. I might see if I can get somebody to drop ship it to me from from the US and then I can finish them off and have all the other options and stuff too in the same ultramarine colors uh, and then last but not least I gotta finish oh my god he's dusty too <sighs> jeez this is uh, my last game of Wolves Whisper figure I hadn't painted uh, when, during playtesting like, we playtested with him but I didn't finish him because we got onto like the editing and book layout and stuff and photography uh, stage so I'm gonna finish him this week just to have him done uh, and to have like a flight ready uh, light uh, frame for Gamma Wolves on the table too 
So you got another on the paint table, done it on the books. I painted another 10 models uh, this week, as well as base cutting and getting some washes done and doing some assembly on some other stuff too, uh, which I was pretty pleased with. It's been a busy week doing all the photography and stuff, ate up some time. Um, and then of course, uh, the kids are back to school now too, uh, where I live. So that's some, that's some, both some free time and also some doing stuff, going back and forth and um, travel and stuff too. So it's been a busy week. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next week for more on the paint table too. And tomorrow for Witches and Wonders, Till in a Mash. How far are I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.